Hi all. Now, uh, who doesn't love Jeopardy? I mean, it's like the game of games. Amazing. Questions fired out, answers galore. It's a nerd's heaven. So I was looking around for an additional example on how to parse data. Up until now, for our blog examples, we've been grabbing data that's either written by text in our first examples, Later, we morphed into pulling data through data feeds that came back in JSON format, JSON, J-S-O-N. And so we've been using that, but in the process, we've there's definitely other types of file formats. Most predominantly is something called CSV. So let me, I'm going to actually go here, open a blank file. So this is what I just said, CSV. So CSV, is another type of data format. And it is essentially a text document that in which the data is comma delimited. First name, last name, date of birth. Not true. So here, here's an, an example of comma delimited format. So this is most prevalent data format out. I had not done an example of this. I had spent time using JSON format, but not CSV. So I let my fingers do the walk-in, started Googling, and I ran across this. This Knowledge Domo website, it's quite amazing. And as soon as I went to, it's a website in which they have fun sample data sets in which you can free to download, in which you can use for your program or interpreting or whatever it is that you're actually using this, needing this data for. And the first one, look at it, Jeopardy questions. Are you crazy? And what, CSV? I had to do it. I had to download this. I had to see what this was about. And then it was just like, well, once you have data, what do you want to do with it? And for me, that always means you blog it. So we're going to be using our WordPress, our standard WordPress website. We're going to set it up to look like a Jeopardy, <laughs> like that looks uh, like it belongs in Jeopardy. And we're going to blog the Jeopardy questions and the answers in a way that makes this fun to use. And it'll show, it'll push forward the ideas on how to interpret data properly using CSV. Okay, so um, let's get started. So the first thing, go here to Knowledge Domo and download the CSV. So once you download the CSV, I have Excel installed, but there's other office suites that will open up a CSV in a spreadsheet format. If you open this up as text, you'll see the commas and we will, but actually let's just do that now. So I have downloaded this. I'm gonna open it as text here in my Visual Studio Code into, uh, UI. And you can see there's show number, air date, these are the columns. Show number, air date, round, category, value, question, answer. And here are, here's the lines of data. So here's the show number, here's the air date. This is a Jeopardy round. History is the uh, category. The value is $200, question, answer. Okay, so there's the question, and then at the end is the answer. So okay, it's all in one line, that's great, good. So let's open this in Excel and let's just get to the first few things that we need to do here. You don't want to do what I'm about to point out here in this view. You want to do it in Excel or uh, one of your spreadsheets. Okay, once you open it up, select it all and expand all the columns so you see everything like I have it here. Show number, air date, round category, question, and answer. Here's the answer. And there are, gosh, over 200,000, just like they said, 216,931 Jeopardy questions and answers here. Amazing. Huge. So the first thing you want to do is select all and you want to edit. I'm sorry. You want to go to format cells and you want to remove, set everything to general. Just remove all of the native formatting. It does cause trouble. Something with the way that they have this encoded just freaks bash out and the columns become misaligned. So once you do that, then go to the air date column, select that, edit, I'm sorry, format cells and switch this to date. This needs to be a date column. I mean, we could do it without it being a date column, but it's much better when we use it as a date column. It's just easier, makes our, our coding a lot cleaner. And also this data set sits locally, unlike the other data sets, in which we were pulling it uh, real time over the internet, whether it was weather data or whether it was botanical data, we were pulling 
uh, pulling uh, those weather services and pulling them in real time. This CSV file, we just downloaded it. It has over uh, 200,000 questions. We don't need to actually interact with the internet with this file anymore. It's already uh, pretty much our finished version. So by making these couple of edits, this changes this data set into being very easy for us to code against in Bash. Okay, so I'm gonna close this and I'm going back to our program. So up until now, when I've been doing these blog examples, I had pretty much three different files. One would be the one that would tell it which city or which plant to go pull the service for. The second file would actually gather the data and then the third one would actually create the blog post. So I mentioned that I uh, set that up that way just to make it easy for demonstration purposes. However, all of those different aspects can coexist in a single program. And so this Jeopardy example, we're gonna do a few new things that we never did. One is we're gonna be using CSV data and it's all gonna be sitting locally. So we're not gonna be W getting and pulling or curling any data back. We're gonna just use this file. The second thing is, is that because the data set is so huge, we don't want this blog to be so predictable. Let's go here, sorry, let's go here. We don't want this blog to be so predictable. Here we have a $400 category, the misfits. And the way this is intended, you sort of scroll down. You have to make your resolution pretty big. You read this, you figure out your answer. And as you scroll down, there's your answer. Boom, kids speak. The serial lovers a friend of crackle it's also in the title of the kids song about a weasel pop there we go so there you go so that's the way this blog works and if you notice sometimes it's a four hundred dollar question sometimes it's a two hundred dollar question they're from different shows different air dates different years this is from the february 13th this one is from february 4th of 2009. This one is from 93. I mean, there's all kinds of questions in here from all the different years that are mixed up. But in the data set, it's pretty organized. Here's all, this is show 4680 and it keeps going. So this data set, as you're reading it in, it's it's not random, it's organized. And if you blog this data, it'll, it'll just increment one, two, three, four in a way that's predictable and not exciting. So we're going to make a few changes to this so that this becomes a bit more of a, a game for us to play around with. Okay, so let me just show you in this, this is the command line that's pointing to the directory that my Visual Studio code is pointed to. I'm just gonna do a list on this directory. So you're gonna see three files. This is the script that I'm running. This is the data file. This question, CSV, is generated by the program. So it's very short-lived. It actually gets deleted all the time. So for this Jeopardy blog, we're only dealing with one program and one data file. So in the CSV format. So here we go. Parsing CSV is very easy, much easier than JSON, in fact. So let's just go here. So I always write my programs in functions. So we're looking at the Jeopardy program, which is where everything is. The, always the first function is remove posts. I always like to be able to clean up all the posts that were generated and start fresh. This next one is generate random question. So what we want is, is for the program to look at this data set of over 200,000 questions and just pick us one. Don't make it for a sequential show. Don't make it about a particular year. Just pick us one. So here's where we set that. This array is actually a list of all the questions, all over 200,000. So this finds out the total number of questions. This just, this question CSV, you see it at the bottom. It's just right now, I'm just setting this value output file as question CSV. It's not doing anything yet. So this is where we generate a random number. So we have total number of questions. So that would be our range. So from one to 216,000, that would be our range. So this is where we actually get a value back. The, the variable name is number. And that is a random number that ranges between one and 216,000 as a whole number. So this is a random integer.
So just to step back for a moment, there's no way I knew how to do this. There's absolutely no way I knew how to do this. I had to research this out and figure this out. I knew that uh, I could get the total number of questions, but how do you pick one? So after some Googling, I found this example, generating random numbers, and I pretty much, I copied it. I copied it and I tested it until I understood it. And then it is now, you know, a new skill in my arsenal of uh, coding. But much before this, I didn't know how to do this. So this is how we get our random number. So there we go. The random number equals the line in which the question lives. So if the random number came back as 18, it would be line number 18, this one. So now this, this here picked question and it, it does exactly what the description says. Grab the random line from the data file. So this goes into the data file, finds whatever number. So again, let's, our fictitious number right now is 18. It says, okay, 18, get me line 18. So that's what picked question is. It's the whole line 18 in this case. Now here's where we take that pick question. I'm writing it to a text file. This is the output file. So this is that question.csv. You don't have to do it this way. This again is because this is a demonstration. I wanted this written to a file so that everyone saw what I was doing, but there's other ways to do this that less noisy. So this is the picked question right here. It's a double jeopardy question. Coal mining, $2,000. There's the question and the answer is coal younger. <laughs> and there's the answer. Okay, so that's, that's what picked question does. So here, how do we, so okay, all we've been doing is randomizing numbers, picking lines. We haven't exactly broken this down into variables that we can use in a blog post. So this is how you do that. So we're going to read in, I'm going to move down. We're going to read in this output file, which is question.csv. Start at the bottom with this. Sorry, right here. You want to read in the question file. I just had to nudge my dog who was sleeping very loud. So here you go. You read in the question file. And then each line in that question file, which is separated by a comma, here's our values. Show number, air date, round, jeopardy, category, value, question, and answer. So back to where we were, here we go. Show number, air date, jeopardy, round. This is the topic, this is the value, this is the question, and this is the answer. Good, so now we can break up this line just based on commas. We can break it up so that we can use it here. Okay, so now all of the values in that line have these associated variable names, show number, air date, underscore, air underscore date, round, jeopardy, blah, 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 question, answer. So here, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna fix question. Question, I want it to be on the screen and have it print neatly. So the actual Jeopardy data has mixed cases. And what I want is for when the question prints for each word, in the text to be capitalized. It just looks better and that's where we are with it. So this line takes question, the original question that we're pulling out of the file and converts it to uppercase syntax. Again, I Googled this to find out how to do this and once I got a working line of syntax, I used it. Same thing with answer. It also needed its data cleaned up so that it also does the same thing. And there's one more line that I believe does it, or was that it? Okay, question and answer definitely needed to be cleaned up. Show number, air date, the actual line number. So this would be the random number that it chose, the Jeopardy round, Jeopardy category, the value, question and answer. They're all here. So they, they're already set as variables and they're already available to the rest of the program once this function runs. So this, once it picks the random number, it then goes, goes into the CSV and grabs that line, goes in here and grabs that line. Then it takes those, that line and breaks it up into these enumerated variables and they're now available to this program while it runs. So since we're only running one program, we don't have to export these variables into another file for another program to read. They're already done. So as long as this function runs, the rest of the program has its necessary values. So we have our question, we have it broken down, now we have to blog it. So here's where we do that. This is essentially a very short blog post, which is the title, and I set the title always up here. It gives the Jeopardy round when it aired and the show number. Jeopardy round when it aired and its show number. And then it gives 
move down and then for the next line it changes its color it gives the value it says the word category the jeopardy category and it then prints the question here's where it adds the jeopardy image there's no hyperlink it's just adding an image and then here's where it has in very very small text the answer so that's the basics on how to set this up however there's something still we want to do, which is, is when we run this. See, blogs are supposed to have this ability to make people check them all the time. And if I'm blogging Jeopardy, I would want to check this all the time. But, okay, so let's go here. There's blog Jeopardy. Okay, so when we run this, this program actually runs as a daemon, meaning that it just stays running and it, it blog posts, but I don't, also don't want it to blog post at regular intervals. I want it to blog post at random intervals. like somewhere between one minute and 30 minutes and then I can check the question realize I don't know how to answer and that's that so just having it have a randomized interval for blogging allows it to be a bit more interesting to use you don't know when it's going to blog a question but when it does you can go check it and you know test yourself so this is how you do that so again we're where we have this function called jeopardy daemon so up until now of course, we could delete all the posts that were there. We got our random question. We set our variables. We created a blog post. And here's where we tell it to wait and run again. So that's the daemon. So here's where we go. Our loop says while one equals one, <laughs> one always equals one, do this. So I'm giving it a range between one minute and 30 minutes as indicated in seconds. So right now it says 10 seconds. That's because I was setting up this, this example for the video, but this number is really supposed to be 1800. So that means 30 minutes, 60 seconds times 30 minutes is 1800. So we have 30 minutes as the interval. Then we're going to grab the time. This our time. We're going to make it. This is our same random generator that we uh, found online. So we're going to set our time as our random time. And then we're going to make the program sleep our time. So what it's going to do is going to generate the random question, random question, then right at the end, blogs, sends the blog out, post out. So generate random question, does the blog, then it sleeps, it waits this random number of seconds between one and 1800 seconds, and then it'll post another Jeopardy question. So that's how you can randomize the blog posts and make it so that they appear at different intervals. You can make this whatever interval you want from minutes to hours, however you like. But the idea is that the questions generate or pop up on the Jeopardy blog without notice. So there you go. There's our blog Jeopardy. So always, I like to show that these programs run, which we have yet to do. So let's do that. I'm going to, well, hold on. Let's back up. Let me go right here right where the Jeopardy daemon is. I don't want this to be 1800 seconds right now because this is a demonstration. Let it come up with a random number of seconds between one and 10. It's just gonna keep posting and posting, but it works better for this example. So now that I've fixed that, I saved it. I'm running my Jeopardy script. It's doing the very first thing, which is deleting everything and it's a blog posting. It's gonna wait five seconds and then it's gonna post again. It's going to wait one second and it's going to post again. Now it's waiting four seconds. So if this was 1800, of course, this number would be much longer and it's already put several blog posts. We're going to look at them, but there wouldn't be that many there right now. Let me just do a refresh. So everything that was here was deleted and here we go. Bodies of water. It's the saltiest of the ocean. The second largest. Of course, I don't know the answer. The Atlantic. <laughs> here we go. 400 game show network. I don't know. Lunch. Okay, there we go. There's our blog Jeopardy. It's running. It's going to keep posting and posting and posting questions that I have no idea of what the answer is. I think my average is that maybe I get one out of a hundred. I have no clue, but it's, it's a great little tool. It certainly put me in my place. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much. Have a great day.